I'm welcoming viewers around the world, viewers in Massachusetts, and viewers all over the social media. My name is Ronald Bernard, and I am here to present the show called Integration. Integration is a show that comes from a partnership between Immigrants Development Alternatives, IDA, which is a nonprofit, and MCTV, which is a multicultural television network that serves communities in Massachusetts. Integration is a show that provide information, provide education for people who are resettling into the U.S. community. So we provide information that people really need in order to make informed decisions regarding their life and things they need to know uh, when they are resettling into the U.S. community. So we're taking subject that can be very complex and make it like one step by step for people to better understand it in order to make informed decisions. So for the show today, we are very glad and honored to have with us Mr. Brian Conkennan. Welcome, Brian. Well, thank you, Ronald. It's uh, great to be joining Integration, and it's always a pleasure to join you. Okay. So Brian Conkennan uh, is a board member of IJDH, and I had a chance when I was doing my internship to work for IJDH. At that time, Brian was the executive director. And Brian is a human rights lawyer, and he's been doing a lot of things uh, here in Massachusetts, as well as working uh, with Haitian, like working in Haiti. This is what I, I meant to say. So Brian, he's here to enlighten us, to talk about like things, legal things that could be helpful for people while they're resettling in the U.S. So one thing we're going to talk about is there is a term they use a lot and not many people understand it, which is public chart. So Brian would going to talk to us about it and give us a little bit uh, understanding of what is public charge. Sure, the public charge doctrine, and, and this has been going on for a long time, is that the, the U.S. says that people who are likely to become a public charge are not admissible to the United States. And what a public charge means is that the government is going to be responsible for your for, for your living costs, basically. And, and typically the things they, that the government has been concerned about are what they call cash payments, like welfare, um, and, and also uh, expensive health, like long-term health care. So traditionally, people who have, people who felt that the, if the government felt somebody was coming to the United States and had n no way to support themselves, or if they were, they were needing some very expensive long-term health care, they would be kept out. Now, the, the traditional exception was that they did not count as a public charge, was um, housing assistance, uh, food assistance for kids, and, um, and health insurance. And the reason why they, they didn't do that was, that's obviously very important. You don't want people to not get food for their kids because they're worried about their immigration status, nor do you not want, and especially people with kids, do you not want people to, to look for safe housing. And that had, for a long time had been the U.S. policy that we're not going to look at housing, health, and, and, and food for kids um, because that's just too dangerous for the society. The, in August, the Trump administration changed that. And the new rule it takes in effect, uh, I believe it's October 15th, so very soon, is that they will look at, uh, at, at housing, welfare, uh, or sorry, housing, um, SNAP, which is child food assistance, mm -hmm. and Medicare to see if people are eligible. And, and the concern among advocates is that that's going to make people it's going to punish people for, for getting food for their kids, um, which is you know something that people really need to, to watch out for. There's, there's, the rule hasn't gone into effect, okay. but I think some people who are, who, who are coming up for, uh, you know, for review for their green card or entry, some other kind of entry into the United States, that they have to be careful about disclosing to the government whether, whether they're, they're receiving any kind of public assistance, including those three things. Okay. So that also might affect someone, uh, quote unquote, who has uh, legal status and who would like to become a U.S. citizen. It might affect 
this kind of group in this process? You know, I'm actually not sure about that, and I and I don't. I want to be very careful because immigration, as you know, Ronald, yeah. <laughs> immigration law is very technical, and I, and I certainly don't want people to 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 make a mistake. So maybe we can check on that and put that up in the notes to the show. Okay, that sounds good. So what? What? Just to be clear, what what I know is going to it's for people who are who are getting a green card, mm -hmm. getting legal permanent residency status, or some other kind of initial. Uh, admission, but we need to check on is whether that also applies if you're going for citizenship. Okay. So um, thank you, Brian. Brian, uh, just talk about you know make you understand clearly the public charge and the anticipate new change that might affect um, people either regarding you know legal permanent you know status and all the time. So uh, as we talked about the we talked about the public charge and now I know when I was at IGDH you were working on on um, I think family reunification program yes. which is a program that allows uh, Haitian family re reunification program it's a program that allows people who apply for their relatives they instead of they stay in Haiti to wait they can come here and wait for their priority date arrive, and they can follow the uh, immigration legal processes in order to get the green card. So um, recently, there is like an anticipate. We cannot say it's changed to. Um, it's like I don't know if it is ended or not. But in case if um, let's say this uh, policy has been ended as you've been working on it. So what do you think would happen? Um, sure. Well, you know, as you, as you explained, um, Haitian, unif Haitian Family Unification Program, it's not a law. It's, okay. it's, it's something that the government, the executive branch, agreed to do. And the problem that it was addressing was the fact was this line, this waiting line that people were in. Um, in order to, to do a family, in order to do a family, um, to, to bring your family members in, there's really two steps. First, you have to prove that they're eligible, and there's all sorts of rules on that, and people need to consult a, a lawyer to make sure that they get that right. Um, and then once, once you get approved, once you find your family members eligible, that you get the green light to bring them in, then they have to wait. They get the green light, but the waiting line at the green light is a long time, um, up to 10 years, sometimes over 10 years in some cases. And the argument that we made when you were, when you were working with us at IJDH was it's silly for these people to be sitting in Haiti waiting because they can't build their life in Haiti because they know that they're that they're going to to move to the United States why not let them go come to the United States be with their family members work contribute to society all the ways that that, that immigrants do and and they can just do that while they're waiting for the number to come up um, we were able to convince the Obama administration that that was a good idea. And so they started sending, they would send notices to people. I, I think it was, if you were within about two years of your, of your date, they, they would send you a notice saying you can, you can apply for this parole and you can come in. Um, the, it looks like the Trump administration fairly quickly just stopped sending those, those invitations. So they didn't announce they were ending the program, but as far as we can tell, they just stopped sending those. They just because the Trump administration has, has a you know has a pretty clear policy on reducing as much as possible the amount of immigrants coming into the United States, and so if they can, to, to, to them that's actually a plus to have people wait in Haiti for another two ten years because it's fewer it's fewer people coming into the United States, and so we think that the program has in all practice been terminated a long time, okay. um, and it was just in August of this year the government made the decision to. to to formally terminate it and to say we're not going to do this anymore. Um, that's something that you know that we can't challenge in court because it's not a law. We can't challenge it in court. We can't, uh, there's not right now with the with Congress, we can't make a, a legal change to it. So that's unfortunately um, going to happen. They the, 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 the administration did say in their order they're still going to review cases on a case-by-case -case basis so it's still possible that that the uh, immigration services could say to somebody who is waiting they can say we'll give you parole um, but they're not going to do it automatically and you have to make a petition and and and, and we expect that's going to be fairly rare that that anybody's going to get relief from that okay so all the viewers you still listening to uh integration show and um we have with us 
Brian Conkinen, who's talking about a legal aspect that can help people who are resettled here to understand and you can make decisions that are not going to put in, in jeopardy, you know, your life, your family, and um, you can plan for your future. So we're going to take a quick pause and we're going to come right back.